Hi guys, welcome back. This week I'm going to be painting a space marine for you. Yeah, I said a space marine, like from the Evil Empire of Games Workshop and all that. Uh, if you know, if I, if I have to tell you a little bit of the secret, I actually really enjoy painting sci-fi and fantasy figures and I actually really like Games Workshop sculpts, a lot of them. Um, but I don't show you that stuff on this channel because uh, I kind of made a conscious decision when I started that this was going to be mostly historical minis because they don't get a lot of coverage otherwise. Um, there are a ton of channels out there already showing you how to paint sci-fi fantasy and particularly Games Workshop and they do a really good, really comprehensive job of it already. So I didn't think there needed to be more of that. That's why, you know, that's why I started out showing you the other side of it, the historical side of things. But that said, I know there are a lot of my viewers who really do like the sci-fi fantasy stuff. They probably actually mostly like sci-fi and fantasy, but they watch my tutorials just because they like to watch me paint or I don't know. Uh, or there are people who just enjoy all of the things, sci-fi, fantasy, and historical. Now, I don't plan to make this channel anything other than it is, but I do want to start sort of slowly integrating in a bit more sci-fi fantasy, more maybe even if few games workshop things now and then so you know not just being so strictly historical as we have been because it'll make me happy it'll make you guys happy and you know it's, it's just fun so this week yeah I'm starting out with a space marine it's going to be a really basic one um, you can see him here he has his arm detached because it's a little bit easier to paint that way but this is a from an older plastic box he's very generic sort of very vanilla space marine he's not one of the more sort of specialist kits for the blood angels or the space wolves or anything like that this is just like an old basic kit that being the case I'm going to be painting him in a very basic way I'm going to be painting him just standard blue ultramarine sort of the iconic space marine so th this tutorial I mean there's a hundred ways online sh telling you how to paint space marines it's been done it's been done to death so this is just really I'm just going to show you my way of doing it okay this is not the best way this is not the fastest way necessarily any of those things this is just how I do it because that's really all I can do with there's there's so much competition and so much information on this already but you know I thought some of you might find it interesting to see just how I would approach a figure like this. And you know, if this works out well, if you guys like this, then I will definitely be doing more of this kind of thing in the future. I will definitely consider doing more sci-fi fantasy, certainly, and perhaps more Games Workshop stuff. Again, I, the only thing is I'm not going to turn this into a channel that's solely focused on this. So don't expect that. Don't expect that if you overwhelm me with like request for Games Workshop's figures and I'm going to do that because I'm not. That's that's not the point here. But I think it is fun and I think we'll all kind of enjoy getting to see some of this other uh, sort of this other side of the hobby from time to time. The very first step of course is to apply a, a dark base coat that you can kind of build the rest of the colors on. And since we're doing an ultramarine here, he's going to be blue. So we want a nice, really dark blue color as sort of the foundation. I've made a mix here of uh, black and dark Prussian blue from Vallejo. And by the way, this tutorial is all going to be with Vallejo paints because that's what I have and that's what I work with. I know that the Citadel range obviously has colors that are just perfect for painting these guys. They were designed for that purpose, but you know, Lay is what I have, so that's what I'm going to be working with today. Now this sort of first highlight we apply after the initial base layer is a very important one because where we kind of block in all the different pieces of the armor. I'm using a mixture here that's about 50-50 uh, dark Prussian blue and regular Prussian blue. <clears throat> and what I'm doing here basically is going in and very carefully defining each separate piece of armor. There's a lot of um, seams and sort of dividing lines in the armor um, and so that's one thing it, it takes quite a while even just to do this I'm not really worried here about blending or any sort of uh, fancy techniques at all all I'm really just trying to do is get the paint on in a nice even layer and make sure that I leave clear dark sort of seams uh, in between all the different segments and in order to do that neatly um, and you know have it look good that takes a fair amount of time and patience but of course uh, pretty much everything I find about painting a space marine well does take quite a lot of time and patience so 
Uh, at first you can see that this paint I'm putting on, it's, it's, it's kind of uneven and blotchy and that comes from the fact that that base is really very, it's such a very, very dark color and the blue I'm applying over it, it's not really a light blue shade either, but when your base is basically black, it, it's still, you know, you're going to get this sort of uneven coat. So I'm going to make sure that I put at least some layer on all areas of the armor uh, first and then once that's um, done, then I'm going to go ahead and go back over everything again with the same color and I'm going to, you know, just try to smooth out the paint and concentrate on getting sort of an even, you just, just smooth looking effect and make sure there's not, no more of that sort of blobby sort of dark base coat showing through in any places and just kind of clean up and even up any lines or sort of divisions between the armor pieces or plates and you know just the various joints uh, if you want you can even take some of the base coat and go back in and sort of use it to line in some areas where you might have accidentally got your highlight color just you know just tidy up all of those dividing lines because it's really important that you get that very good now early on because it's it'll just make sort of what we do from <laughs> this point onward a lot easier Now the next layer, I actually didn't show a great deal, but what I did here was take just plain uh, Prussian blue and I started uh, layering it over top of the previous uh, layer and you can see I'm applying it and I'm blending it out. The, the step between that uh, Prussian blue and the last layer is not great, so you don't have to work really hard to really blend the colors together. It's, it's a nice subtle uh, transition. I. I, I did this actually quite a bit more than you're seeing me apply. I've actually at this point already put on several layers of the paint and I'm just building it up to get it brighter and stronger in certain areas. Uh, actually I didn't show more of this because I was having some issues with my memory card. I was losing some footage but you kind of you can get the idea of what I'm doing here. This is sort of a second highlight layer. It's a subtle transition step and I recommend when you're painting armor like this you'll make your life a lot easier, you'll have a lot less headaches if you make sure your sort of steps between colors are subtle and gradual and you don't have to blend much because blending on these big smooth surfaces can be really tricky so making sure that the color jumps are small will just make your life much simpler in that case. Now. I'm applying a new highlight layer and for this I've mixed some deep sky blue into my Prussian blue. And you can see I'm now starting to focus it on areas of the armor where I would expect light to be hitting, like the knees, the sort of the sides of his calf pieces, his uh, sort of toes, the tops of his boots, the top of his helmet, the top of his backpack. Uh, it's the same principle really as when you're highlighting any other figure, honestly. And in some ways it's actually easier to see where that light would be hitting. The only thing that's trickier here is that you've got these big smooth uh, sort of uh, man-made surfaces which have to look very smooth, you know, to look nice. You, need, you have to try to get this really smooth, really well blended transition. And that's a lot of work. And that's again why I just said in the last step, it's very important you keep your steps small or else you're going to be in for a lot of extra work. And this uh, transition between this color and the last is bigger than between the colors previous to that. So you can see I'm having to do a bit more work blending. Though do keep in mind that colors are often much brighter when you first apply them when they're wet and that they tend to tone and dry a lot uh, more, su more sort of more subtly than when they first go on. And, you can kind of forget that sometimes, but it is good to keep in mind. Do a test if you're not sure first, so you know exactly what to expect. Um, <clears throat> but I'm more concerned when I apply this paint first that I sort of manage to blend it out well into sort of the surrounding areas, even if it isn't as bright as I want it to be. It's easier to first worry about getting it blended out and then once you do have done that you can go back in with the second layer and use that to sort of brighten and strengthen the color sort of in the middle of that area that you're trying to paint and you know bring it up a little bit and you know 
I'm just gonna go over all the armor again, uh, looking for these sort of areas where I want to sort of build up these light highlights. I've prepared one final highlight layer now, which has even more of the deep sky blue mixed into it, and I'm gonna, again, work it back over the areas where I want a lot of light to be hit in the armor, and I'm gonna spend a lot of time blending this out because this color stuff is actually probably a little bigger than you know I should be making here, so I'm having to put a lot more time into getting a smooth transition. Um, it would probably, on reflection, would have been better to do a couple more layers, but I got a little impatient. You can see why when you've got this much ground to cover and there's so many things to paint carefully, uh, you, you tend to you get tend to feel a little impatient. You know, you want to skip ahead a little bit, get it done faster, so you you know you make a little bit bigger leap in color. But on the other hand, I don't know if it's worth it because you have to spend so much extra time blending, sort of, to make up for that. But anyway, I did make it work in the end after just a lot of time spent smoothing the paint on. Uh, this lightest color, I didn't. Uh, put it as many places as you, you can see. Uh, I, I was really, you know, trying to emphasize the lightest areas. And you wouldn't even have to necessarily put this layer on. You'll have to decide on your Space Marine, you know, how bright or light you like the armor to look, how high contrast you want it to be. Um, and, you know, there's so much variety in sort of Space Marine armor colors that you can go for a more dark, uh, subtle look or a much more high contrast look, you know, it, 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 then both styles will uh, end up looking really good. Um, of course, as you know, I am more of a high contrast type painter, so I, when given the chance, I usually just can't resist pushing it just a little farther maybe than I always should, just, you know, building up that extra sort of light layer of, you know, color on my model. Now the next step here is probably simultaneously the most important and also the most frustrating for getting a good looking uh, Space Marine. <laughs> and that is to fine line all of the armor segments. Uh, this is also sort of the standard best practice, I guess it's mandated by Games Workshop. I didn't make this up. Well, I mean, that is, that's what they sort of seem to uh, do as part of their official style when they're trying to paint good looking space marines and it does really make them look great. Uh, this this sort of uh, fine lining technique will also really make up for um, armor that maybe you didn't highlight as much. You know I spent several steps you know blending and highlighting the armor um, but because this fine lining is brilliant in the sense that if you didn't do that, if you didn't spend a lot of time applying blended highlights to the armor first, and you just left it fairly dark, you were fairly simple, but then you go in and fine line it afterwards, you'll still get really good, nice looking armor that really pops and has a sort of nice detail on it. And if you do both of the things, you do blending on your armor and you fine line it, then it'll look really, really great. The, the frustrating thing about fine lining is though, I can't really, you know, give you any tips or really help you get better at it. There, there is no real trick to this. It's just really the three P's. Practice, uh, persistence, and precision. You just have to do it over and over again. You have to keep trying it, you know, develop your brush control, develop your motor control. Um, use a very small brush. I have a number zero here and this color I'm applying here by the way is mostly deep sky blue with a little bit of Prussian blue to darken it down but not very much and I'm of course using the paint very thin because with all detail work like this you want very smooth paint that flows on um, <coughs> to the model really really easily and fine lining is it's just hard. It's, it's very unforgiving you know if you make a mistake or your lines get too thick um, you know, it's going to look bad and you'll probably have to clean it off and start over. That's one, if I can offer any tips as far as fine lining goes, the first would be take your time, go slow, and don't try to make long, continuous brush strokes because it just increases the chance you're going to mess up. The best way, you know, on long surfaces, if you're not, if you don't think you can do it, is make a series of small strokes, short, small strokes and uh, connect them together. 
that's much easier than trying to draw a constant line. And the second thing is if you draw a line that's messed up or it's too thick, usually you can just immediately sort of take your finger and wipe it off. Just do that. If you, if you do a line and if you're, and you don't feel 100% sure about how it looks, immediately just take your finger and just wipe that paint off um, and then and try and do it again. And that's the best thing because you, when you're doing this you can't afford to have messy, sloppy, fat looking lines because it'll just kind of ruin the whole overall look. And, but you can at the same time, you can uh, clean up after it in some ways. For example, you can see where it borders on a dark seam line. If I go over and get my light paint onto those dark seam lines, you can go back in later with some dark paint and sort of go down in there and clean that up. So, I mean, <clears throat> there are some fixes for slightly sloppy fine lining, but in general for the best results, it, you really just have to practice a lot and have a lot of patience. And, you know, <clears throat> it will uh, produce a spectacular looking model once you really start to get it down and you know uh, can do it you know in a reasonable amount of time. Well if you've got this far you've painted the blending on the armor and all that fine lining and you're all done congratulations because you've now finished sort of the bulk of the Space Marine and the hardest part and if you're not sort of a nervous gibbering wreck right now you can pat yourself on the back. So now I'm going to go ahead and start working on some sort of black detail areas on this figure. There's sort of this, um, I don't know, black, I don't know, under armor, sort of this black sort of thing between the joints and I'm going to base coat that. Also, on his gun, on his uh, plasma gun, there are some sort of grips and things. And I'm going to base coat those areas first using black paint, and then I'm going to start highlighting. I'm first going to um, take some German gray. I'm going to mix a little bit of the dark Prussian blue into it. I want to make sure my grays here have blue in them just so they have a little bit of cohesion with the blue armor. So I'm going to apply that first highlight there of German gray to all of those areas. And then after that, I'm going to take, and I'm going to mix in a little bit of sky gray and again, some more blue, just so we keep our blue gray. And I'm going to start uh, highlighting sort of all of the higher areas. So sort of just along all those ridges and bumps on the gun grips and when it, and the sort of the joints between the armor, there's sort of like these ridges there. And I'm going to start picking out those ridges, uh, this first layer you can be pretty rough with, but as you build this up, you're going to want to be a little bit more careful uh, each time. Um, the, the, as for the sort of the dividing areas between the armor, uh, you don't have to highlight this very high. I'm, I kind of very lightly put, I think, two highlights on top of the German gray, which is increasing degrees of white or and or sky gray mixed into them and you can see I focus the color sort of on the top surfaces of those areas sort of blending outward so it just looks like there's sort of a little shine on there and as for the gun grips I'm gonna uh, highlight them a little further mix in a little more white and add a, just a bit of an extra highlight because I want them to be a little bit brighter a little bit more just gen uh, sort of generously highlighted now, the body of his gun, that can be various colors, but red is a pretty common shade you see, especially these days on uh, sort of a Space Marine gun. So I'm gonna be doing that. I've got some Vallejo Black Red, and I'm just gonna put that all over the gun body as a base coat. I'm also gonna put a bit in the sockets of his eyes, you know, it's the, sort of the lenses that are in his, the helmet of his power armor, and I'm gonna base coat those also with the same black red color. Now for my first highlight on the red, I'm just going to grab some Fiston Red. This is a Citadel paint, by the way, and I'm going to um, start building it up. You can see I, I also am painting that sort of uh, wax thing, purity seal, in the red color, so don't forget that either. And same deal on the base of the gun. I'm going to apply the Mephiston Red here and uh, build it up. Uh, the gun's going to look pretty sloppy at this point because there's red paint is all over areas of the gun that are not supposed to be red, but don't worry, that'll get cleaned up later. So 
First, I'm going to just put the Mephisto on red base coat on. And also, don't forget, again, his eye sockets. You want to also pop some of this color in there as well. And now I'm just going to continue highlighting the gun body. Now with Evil Sun Scarlet, you can see I'm just building it up here, get, gradually sort of brightening the gun. And you can see everything is still pretty sloppy but we're not gonna worry about that too much now. I'm also gonna pop a little bit again in the, the helmet eye sockets and use it to sort of brighten up the uh, wax on the purity seal while I'm at it. This next part's a little bit fussy because I find it very hard to kind of hold on to the gun with this toothpick and at the same time actually show you what I'm painting. So, uh, actually, if you do this off camera, you might find it substantially easier. But I'm going to be fine lining the red body of the gun. And I've made a mixture here of Evil Sun Scarlet and Vallejo Buff. So I'm creating kind of a pinky yellow color. And I'm just going to, again, be taking my really fine brush here, my double zero. And I'm going to be very carefully sort of going around all of the different edges of the red area with this color. And I'm, again, just focusing on trying to get a nice, smooth, even line. If you feel like the line gets messy or thick or you don't like it, you can always just go back in with the sort of base red color and thin it out and even it out a little bit. And again, things still look pretty sloppy, but a lot of this is going to start to improve once we paint the other areas of the gun. You also want to take this pink red color and use it to put sort of a stripey highlight sort of along the top part of the eye sockets again, and also use it to do a little bit of edge highlighting around the purity seal. Now I'm going to work on painting sort of the plasma element in our plasma gun. Uh, the easiest way I find to do this is to sort of base coat the whole thing in dark Prussian blue, and then I'm going to start sort of highlighting. I'm not going to worry, as you can see, about all those little ribs in there because that just takes too much time and slows things down. So what I'm taking now is a mixture of just then plain Prussian blue with some um, of the deep sky blue in it. You can see I'm running it along the edges and especially along the top. Obviously what you want is the brightest color at the top and you want to sort of fade and do a darker blue down towards the base and size. You're kind of trying to get a blended transitional look uh, going here. Usually I find here if you just apply these layers in quick succes succession while the paint is still wet, you can sort of blend it together more easily. And then I just sort of move up to an even brighter blue, up to a pure sky blue, or deep sky blue, I should say, along the top, blending down, and again, on the sides. And then finally, I finish up by taking just almost white, with just a hint of blue in it. And you can see I'm running it just along the very sharp edge there. So it's really shiny there, and again, sort of just blending it, it uh, down and out. The top of the gun should be light too, but you should have the brightest, almost white sort of, sort of gleam uh, just along that sharp edge. And this is the basic idea is this is going to look like you've got this sort of glowing blue plasma element in here. Once you've kind of done that and you've roughed out the color transitions, then. The easiest thing to do to, to finish it off is to take your dark Prussian blue again, make sure it's nice and thin, and take your real fine brush, and then very carefully uh, draw lines down, or sort of draw it, or put it down in all those lines in between the separate sort of like coils or ribs. And I think doing it this way is much faster than highlighting each of the ribs individually. This way you just do it all as one element, and then just carefully sort of pick out the individual sort of bands in a darker color later. Now I am base coating all of the sort of steel, silver, metal, gray areas on the figure. Uh, most of those are going to be on the gun. There's a variety of sort of parts. Uh, everything basically that's not the red body is going to be metal. Uh, that is kind of includes that big sort of front portion of the gun and a lot of little detail bits on there as well. On the figure itself, there's going to be just some little bits like little pipes and tubes on his helmet, on his backpack, on his um, boots even. Uh, also his hand grenades, don't forget about those. Those should be steel, metal, gray, whatever. Uh, the base coat I'm using here is a mixture of uh, German gray with a bit of uh, Vallejo Air gun metal to make it shinier and more metallic looking.
I'm then going to continue highlighting the metal areas by mixing uh, uh, more gun metal into my color. So it's just a sort of a stronger version now. It's not quite pure gun metal, but it's close. And I'm going to again just start working over all of the areas. Uh, at this point, I'm going to blend it a little bit so the very deepest, darkest areas sort of between separate pieces of metal are going to keep uh, that very dark base shade. But for the most part, you, you can see that this color is going to go on most of the metal areas on the figure. Uh, now I'm taking a mixture of Vallejo Air uh, Silver and the Vallejo Air Gun Metal and you can see I'm applying it really as a highlight on the metal areas, really towards the top, blending it down. You can see on like the gun there, there's a lot of sort of like exhaust vents and sort of uh, slits and stuff and I'm not worrying too much that they're getting painted over. I find it easier just to worry about sort of getting a smooth blend on the large areas and then when you're done you can go back in with some black paint kind of clean and pick those out. Also you want to paint sort of a hole in the barrel, a black circle because there isn't one sculpted in. Um, on the figure itself you're going to want to be careful not to over highlight like the hand grenade there because you don't want it too bright so don't be putting really bright colors on there. Uh, and then I went and took just pure Vallejo Air Silver as sort of my highest highlight on edges and tops of things, places I really wanted to get nice and shiny. Um, I did make some mistakes sometimes, get things too bright or get bright paint where I didn't want it. So it helps to have some really dark gray, deep colored metallic on hand that you can use as kind of a clean up edge color so you can then go back in and tidy up fine line around things or darken back down uh, sort of sort of divisional areas in the sculpt. Uh, I spent a lot of time in fact on the gun sort of cleaning up and perfecting all the, the different pieces uh, because it is indeed I find actually very difficult to paint these little guns neatly. In some ways I think it's harder than actually doing the armor well. Now there are also some sort of gold areas on this model, which mostly include the sort of uh, the winged skull on the front of his armor. There's also a skull on the back of his backpack, which I'm going to be doing in gold, and of course the edging on his uh, shoulder pads. I'm basically in those areas with a mixture of German camouflage black brown that has just a bit of Vallejo Air gold mixed into it. I'm purposely keeping this first layer quite, quite dark. Uh, once that's on everywhere, I'm then going to just take some pure Vallejo Air Gold, which I thinned a fair amount, and I'm going to start sort of uh, s smoothing that on over top and sort of just gradually highlighting those areas up. Um, on the um, sort of wing skull, I found it helpful, in fact, to uh, apply that sort of gold highlight and then go back in afterwards, put on a a brown wash. I used Agrax Earthshade again just to help pick out between those wings and stuff and get some better definitions and extra dimension and then again apply more gold on top of that just to build it up a little bit more because there's so much sort of fine sculpting and detail going on there. Now you can't really just stop with pure gold because it's not nearly shiny and blingy enough on its own. So to get a final highlight for the gold areas, I've mixed the Vallejo Air Gold with Vallejo Air Silver. So it's quite shiny. And now I'm using a fine brush here to make sure, you know, that I get really crisp details. And I'm going to pick out uh, sort of along all the feathers and the wings and sort of all the high points on the skull um, along the shoulder pads. I'm going to be, you know, careful to sort of accentuate certain areas where light is hitting to make them look extra shiny and also pick out just along some sharp edges where I can and this will just help add that you know bling that you really expect to see in space marine armor. And now because I'm mostly done with the space marine I've taken the right arm and I've glued it on to the rest of the model and I find that it's also easier for this next step which is painting the insignia onto the shoulder pads. Now obviously the uh, space marine kits also come with decals and if you are not very confident in your freehand abilities or just in a hurry you can use those but obviously I prefer the freehand look and honestly I think most Space Marine insignia is pretty darned easy to paint. Well I mean it depends, some is complicated but much of it is simple so I think 
you can freehand it usually without too much trouble and it looks nicer so you should try. Uh, so you can see on the left shoulder I sort of roughed in the sort of Omega ultramarine symbol and on the right shoulder I'm going to be applying that sort of arrow that they typically have. Now uh, the color I'm using here by the way is uh, sky gray for my base. So what I'm basically doing is uh, putting it on and then I'm going back over it with reasonably thin down white paint and I'm going to sort of build it up and uh, lighten it up and that adds some extra dimension and just makes the whole thing look neater and a little bit more detailed than if you don't do it in two color layers. I also found it was nice to take a little dark Prussian blue or actually I think I used to use plain Prussian blue and sort of also lightly outline those shapes too which just helped to find it sort of even better. Now disclaimer here I'm not saying that the way I'm painting this insignia is strictly accurate or even in a sort of a combination that is actually 100% appropriate but on the other hand hey this is a freaking fantasy sci-fi army so if you're worried that I did not use accurate insignia then you're probably a little too anal about these things. Um, anyway so yeah I'm getting sort of highlighting the arrow and the ultramarine symbol and then once I'm satisfied with sort of the gray white area over top of that arrow I am going to add a number for the uh, Space Marine Company. Um, obviously, you know, they have a variety of uh, companies de that they designate using Roman numerals. And, you know, of course, the, the company, all of them have slightly different insignia and different styles to their armor. I'm really not going to worry about any of that in the combinations, like I said. And I'm just going to make this guy from the fourth company because I like painting the Roman numeral four. I don't know why. I find it aesthetically pleasing. Obviously, you could paint any other number here that you like. But it usually goes uh, on or somewhere around the aero design. And I just took some Prussian blue, basically, and just carefully wrote in the number four sort of at the base of that arrow and I did go back over it a couple times and used a lot of white paint too to clean it up and make sure I got a nice neat even sort of um, result and that's often something you'll have to do when you're painting in letters or numbers or something because you know getting them smooth and even is you know tricky to do when you're working at this scale. All right, and so here's our finished sort of vanilla run of the mill type ultramarine figure done kind of in my painting style. You can see there's a couple things here that I painted that I didn't really talk about, like the uh, scroll on his purity seal. I painted that using a kind of a mixture of white and buff that I layered together and then made some sort of squiggly lines over top of it. And I put a little white dot in his the eyepieces and helmet too, just some bits and bobs like that. But I, there's so much to cover here, I didn't really even want to just show you every single tiny thing. Again, uh, this technique is not the be all and end all, obviously, of paintings for Ace Marines. As a matter of fact, it's quite a time consuming way to do it. Though I will, full disclosure, I have actually painted 10 Space Marines in this fashion and a sergeant. So it's not like this is a one-off thing that I've never done before. I have done it like this before and on more guys than this, but it does take a really long time to do it like this. But on the other hand, I think it produces pretty nice looking uh, results. Uh, this figure is of a very high quality, but I mean, I can understand probably not a practical sort of style to use if you're producing a whole army. But, you know, maybe nice if you want to do a command figure or something a little bit, you know, special. Um, and I think after I paint, anytime I paint a Space Marine, I guess, I'm always reminded again of just <laughs> what a pain in the butt they are. I love how they look when they're finished, but I, every time I do one, I'm always like, oh my god, I'm always cursing the whole time about just what a lot of work is goes into painting a Space Marine to a high standard. They're... They look like simple fingers, but doing them well can be deceptively 
uh, difficult. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like it, share it, leave me comments. I am sure I'm going to get a lot of comments on this one. I'm sure a lot of people are going to have, you know, strong opinions over how I did or did not paint the Space Marine. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing all of that. I, I think, at least I hope. Um, so uh, that's all I think. Of course, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this stuff, though not necessarily Space Marines every week. And um, yeah, that's all for now, and I will see you next time. Going in and very carefully defining each separate piece of armor. There's a lot of um, seams and sort of dividing lines in the armor. Um, and so that's one thing. It, it takes quite a while even just to do this. I'm not really worried here about blending or any sort of uh, fancy techniques at all. All I'm really just trying to do is get the paint on in a nice even layer and make sure that I leave clear, dark sort of seams uh, in between all the different segments. And in order to do that neatly um, and, you know, have it look good, that takes a fair amount of time and patience. But of course, uh, pretty much everything I find about painting a Space Marine, well, does take quite a lot of time and patience. So uh, at first you can see that this paint I'm putting on, it's, it's, it's kind of uneven and blotchy and that comes from the fact that that base is really very, it's such a very, very dark color and the blue I'm applying over it, it's not really a light blue shade either, but when your base is basically black, it, it's still, you know, you're going to get this sort of uneven coat. So I'm going to make sure that I put at least some layer on all areas of the armor uh, first and then once that's um, done, then I'm going to go ahead and go back over everything again with the same color. And I'm going to, you know, just try to smooth out the paint and concentrate on getting sort of an even, you just, just smooth looking effect and make sure there's not, no more of that sort of blobby sort of dark base coat showing through in any places and just kind of clean up and even up any lines or sort of divisions between the armor pieces or plates and you know just the various joints uh, if you want you can even take some of the base coat and go back in and sort of use it to line in some areas where you might have accidentally got your highlight color just you know just tidy up all of those dividing lines because it's really important that you get that very good man-made surfaces which have to look very smooth you know to look nice that you need you have to try to get this really smooth really well blended transition and that's a lot of work and that's again why i just said in the last step it's very important you keep your steps small or else you're going to be in for a lot of extra work and this uh, transition between this color and last is bigger than between the colors previous to that so you can see I'm having to do a bit more work blending though do keep in mind that colors are often much brighter when you first apply them when they're wet and that they tend to tone and dry a lot uh, more su more sort of more subtly than when they first go on and it, you can kind of forget that sometimes but it is good to keep in mind do a test if you're not sure first so you know exactly what to expect um, but I'm more concerned when I apply this paint first that I sort of manage to blend it out well into sort of the surrounding areas even if it isn't as bright as I want it to be it's easier to first worry about getting it blended out and then once you do have done that you can go back in with the second layer and use that to sort of brighten and strengthen the color sort of in the middle of that area that you're trying to paint and you know bring it up a little bit and you know I'm just gonna go over all the armor again uh, looking for these sort of areas where I want to sort of build up these light highlights I've prepared one final highlight layer now which has even more of the deep sky blue mixed into it and I'm gonna again work it back over the areas where I want a lot of light to be hit in the armor and I'm going to spend a lot of time blending this out 
because this color step is actually probably a little bigger than you know I should be making here now early on because it's it'll just make sort of what we do from this point onward a lot easier. Now the next layer I actually didn't show a great deal but what I did here was take just plain uh, Prussian blue and I started uh, layering it over top of the previous uh, layer and you can see I'm applying it and uh, blending it out. The, the step between that uh, Prussian blue and the last layer is not great so you don't have to work really hard to really blend the colors together. It's, it's a nice subtle uh, transition. I, I, I did this actually quite a bit more than you're seeing me apply. I've actually at this point already put on several layers of the paint and I'm just building it up to get it brighter and stronger in certain areas. Uh, actually, I didn't show more of this because I was having some issues with my memory card. I was losing some footage, but you kind of you can get the idea of what I'm doing here. This is sort of a second highlight layer. It's a subtle transition step, and I recommend when you're painting armor like this, you'll make your life a lot easier. You'll have a lot less headaches if you make sure your sort of steps between colors are subtle and gradual, and you don't have to blend much because blending over on these big smooth surfaces can be really tricky. So making sure that the color jumps are small will just make your life much simpler in that case. Now I'm applying a new highlight layer and for this I've mixed some deep sky blue into my Prussian blue. And you can see I'm now starting to focus it on areas of the armor where I would expect light to be hitting like the knees, the sort of the sides of his calf pieces, his uh, sort of toes, the tops of his boots, the top of his helmet, the top of his backpack. Uh, it's the same principle really as when you're highlighting any other figure honestly and in some ways it's actually easier to see where that light would be hitting. The only thing that's trickier here is that you've got these big smooth uh, sort of uh, Hi guys, welcome back. This week I'm going to be painting a space marine for you. Yeah, I said a space marine, like from the Evil Empire of Games Workshop and all that. Uh, if you know, if I, if I have to tell you a little bit of the secret, I actually really enjoy painting sci-fi and fantasy figures, and I actually really like Games Workshop sculpts, a lot of them. Um, but I don't show you that stuff on this channel because uh, I kind of made a conscious decision when I started that this was going to be mostly historical minis because... They don't get a lot of coverage otherwise. Um, there are a ton of channels out there already showing you how to paint sci-fi fantasy and particularly Games Workshop and they do a really good, really comprehensive job of it already. So I didn't think there need to be more of that. That's why, you know, that's why I started out showing you the other side of it, the historical side of things. But that said, I know there are a lot of my viewers who really do like the sci-fi fantasy stuff. They probably actually mostly like sci-fi and fantasy, but they watch my tutorials just because they like to watch me paint or I don't know. Uh, or there are people who just enjoy all of the things, sci-fi, fantasy, and historical. Now, I don't plan to make this channel anything other than it is, but I do want to start sort of slowly integrating a bit more sci-fi fantasy, more maybe even a few games workshop things now and then. So, you know, not just being so strictly historical as we have been, because it'll make me happy, it'll make you guys happy, and, you know, it's, it's just fun. So, this week, yeah, I'm starting out with a Space Marine. It's going to be a really basic one. Um, you can see him here. He has his arm detached because it's a little bit easier to paint that way. But this is a, from an older plastic box. He's very generic, sort of very vanilla Space Marine. He's not one of the more sort of specialist kits for the Blood Angels or the Space Wolves or anything like that. This is just like an old basic kit. That being the case, I'm going to be painting him in a very basic way. I'm going to be painting him just standard blue ultramarine, sort of the iconic space marine. So th this tutorial, I mean, there's a hundred ways online sh telling you how to paint space marines. It's been done. It's been done to death. So this is just really, I'm just going to show you my way of doing it, okay? This is not the best way. This is not the fastest way necessarily. Any of those things. This is just how I do it because that's really all I can do. With there's, there's so much competition and so much information on this already. But, you know, I thought 
some of you might find it interesting to see just how I would approach a figure like this. And you know, if this works out well, if you guys like this, then I will definitely be doing more of this kind of thing in the future. I will definitely consider doing more sci-fi fantasy, certainly, and perhaps more games workshops. So again, I, the only thing is I'm not going to turn this into a channel that's solely focused on this. So don't expect that. Don't expect that if you overwhelm me with like requests for games workshops figures that I'm going to do that because I'm not. That's, that's not the point here. But I think it is fun and I think we'll all kind of enjoy getting to see some of this other, uh, sort of this other side of the hobby from time to time. The very first step, of course, is to apply a, a dark base coat that you can kind of build the rest of the colors on. And since we're doing an ultramarine here, he's gonna be blue. So we want a nice, really dark blue color as sort of the foundation. I've made a mix here of uh, black and dark Prussian blue from Vallejo. And by the way, this tutorial is all gonna be with Vallejo paints because that's what I have and that's what I work with. I know that the Citadel range obviously has colors that are just perfect for painting these guys. They were designed for that purpose, but you know, Belay is what I have, so that's what I'm going to be working with today. Now this sort of first highlight we apply after the initial base layer is a very important one because where we kind of block in all the different pieces of the armor. I'm using a mixture here that's about 50-50 uh, dark Prussian blue and regular Prussian blue. <clears throat> and what I'm doing here basically 